Hello and welcome back to another end up weather video. Today we are talking about another winter storm. This one in the west, and, and it's flying a little bit under the radar because Winter Storm Elliot is the big deal, bringing snow, wind, rain to the east. Winter Storm Fernando is going to be bringing snow and ice to the northwest. So the Weather Channel just has a video on it. I'm not going to show it because copyright. But I will share the headline, New Storm Packing Ice Snow Arrives in the Northwest on Thursday. So let's move on and go into more detail about this storm. Starting off with our NWS hazards, we're going to just focus here on the Northwest. And we have winter storm watches in much of the Puget Sound area of Washington. Winter storm warnings a little bit further inland as well as in southern Washington and northern Oregon. Winter weather advisories in parts of Idaho, Oregon, Washington, and California. And a couple of counties there in Oregon under ice storm warnings. Those are the areas where we could be seeing a lot of that freezing rain. So let's go over your timing here. This is the NAM 3 kilometer model. So uh, I guess I have to adjust here. So eight hours. All right. So this is, let's move around here to, that is 10 a.m. Thursday. This is not going to come out until closer to this time frame. So this is about 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So as we are seeing this little band here of snow moving through Nevada and Oregon, you can see some rain and ice starting to push in from the west to the east. So let's go here to 8 p.m. Pacific time. At this point, you can see that ice, that red, starting to filter into portions of Oregon, but still a lot of rain, especially near Portland, but further inland, east of the Cascades Range over there, you can see that all shifts to snow. So let's go another four hours in the future. This is midnight Friday morning Pacific time, and you can see that that ice is really starting to filter in now all that red up and down the coast of Oregon and Washington, even starting to stretch further inland. Although there is a little pocket in that Portland, Vancouver area, Vancouver, Washington, that is, where this will stay rain for a little longer. And that little pocket is probably due to heat, uh, those urban heat pockets. Uh, that is definitely something we need to look for with this. Since if we take a little look at the soundings here right around there, you can see that the surface is just below freezing, 29 degrees. So that could change significantly uh, depending on elevations, depending on you know those urban heat pockets. So it's just slightly below freezing at the surface, which allows for that ice to form. But you have those areas that are above freezing at the surface, so it's just plain old rain. You can also see that on the northern side of the storm, you have areas near Seattle getting snow to start. So we are now at 4 a.m. You can see that Portland has switched over to ice and sleet, and that's just a mess of wintry weather there. We also have Seattle and Tacoma in the ice and sleet as well. Let me actually pull up my map so I can get a little bit of detail there. So the Seattle Tacoma area is kind of going to be split here. Um, you can see that uh, up here by Everett, they are in sleet, but down by Tacoma, you are more in that freezing rain and Olympia is definitely in that freezing rain. So that's where you're going to have to just play it by ear. You have the local NWS that's probably going to be issuing plenty of advisories on this storm system because those lines are going to be so close to populated areas. So depending on where you fall with those lines, you could be in sleet, you could be in freezing rain, you could be in rain, you could be in snow. That's the confusing part about these storm systems in the Northwest, especially with all the cold that we've had because of Winter Storm Elliot. That's going to make things a little bit more complicated for you. So we're going to move over to 8 a.m., and you can see at this point, Seattle, Tacoma, Everett, Olympia, 
all freezing rain. But further inland, you can see a lot of snow in the region, especially in the Cascades. But not a lot of rain here. You can see that uh, Portland is on and off freezing drizzle. Maybe a little bit of rain along the coastline, but really not much other than that. So here we go into noon time on Friday. You can see maybe a little bit of freezing drizzle in the Seattle area, but just inland and on the coastline, rain. So fine line there, either rain or freezing drizzle, one of the two. And that snow starting to move further inland at that point. 4 p.m. on Friday, you can see here that most of the storm is starting to wrap up, kind of becoming a little bit of a clipper system into Montana, but a little bit of rain and freezing drizzle up in the higher elevations of Washington and Oregon. And by 8 p.m. Friday, you have another round moving in. This one will mostly be rain for the lower elevations, snow for the higher elevations which is pretty standard. You have a little bit of freezing rain in some of those in-between spots, maybe even uh, over in the eastern part of the state. So Spokane, Washington could be in that freezing rain there. That is right around 4 p.m. on Saturday Pacific time. So here is the total precipitation. This doesn't matter if it's rain, snow, sleet, freezing rain. Just t total amount of water coming out of the sky. So you can see the higher elevations up in that 4-inch range, but Seattle, around a half an inch. Portland, maybe a quarter to a half an inch. So low amounts of overall precipitation, except for in those higher elevations. Here is the snow totals, and you can see here, very light on the snow totals. Uh, most of the heavier snow up in the higher elevations of the Cascades in northern Washington, where some areas could be seen two, three feet, maybe even more in the very high elevations, four or five feet. And then you also have another hot spot here in northern Idaho and western Montana, where you could see areas well above a foot of snow. But here is the main player, and this is going to be overdone because the NAM really doesn't like to calculate freezing rain correctly, but this just shows where our hotspots are for freezing rain. You can see that areas just to the west of Olympia are a little bit more of a hotspot than the actual city itself. Uh, let's actually see, Olympia is right down, so I would consider Olympia in the hotspot there, but north and west of there is even worse. Uh, you also have up in the mountains, another hotspot there, but Seattle could be uh, looking at a little glaze of ice. Uh, so could Portland. Um, and even down towards Salem and Eugene could be seeing some ice as well. But that is where we go here to... This is actually snow totals, but let's look at the ice first. So I have this map here. This is from the Weather Prediction Center. And this is the 50th percentile of 72-hour ice accumulation. So... This is just the median. You can see that Portland in that quarter to half an inch range. Olympia, Seattle, Tacoma, you're in there too. Everett, you're also in there. Uh, Kennewick, Salem, I think even down into Eugene. Let's see. Uh, Eugene's actually in the next category. So Salem, Kennewick, Olympia, Tacoma, Seattle, Everett. You guys are in that tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch range. That also includes... Uh, Victoria in Canada and finally that glaze to a tenth of an inch that includes Eugene that includes Spokane so that is the areas that you could be seeing some icing there in those greens most significant icing around Portland but that's the 50th percentile here is the 95th percentile this means that you have a 5% chance of seeing more than this but you also have a 95% chance of seeing this or less. So that includes a bullseye just to the northeast of Portland of, what is that? Let's see, over an inch. So when it comes down to it, 
this is where you get your range, right? From the 5th to 95th percentiles. This is 100% going to happen. Uh, you have Portland. Let's go here to the 5th percentile. Portland, you're between a glaze and a half an inch. So that really isn't very descriptive. But we like to settle in on this 50th percentile because, you know, there's a 50% chance of a little bit more, 50% of a little bit less. But this is usually what I look at in terms of my forecast, the 50th percentile. So this, you could kind of reliably trust this. This is kind of what the models have been saying. This is like the average of all the different models right here. Same thing here with snow. Here's the 50th percentile. And you can see that clear hot spot in the upper elevations just to the north and east of Seattle in the Cascades. And you can see that little dash of purple that is 15 to 18 inches. That bright blue that is 12 to 15 inches. The rest of these medium and dark blues that is 6 to 12 inches. That dark green that's 4 to 6 inches. Medium green 2 to 4 inches. And that pale green is an inch to 2 inches. So you can see those two clear hot spots. We have the upper elevations of the Cascades in northern Washington, as well as in northern Idaho. But overall, this really isn't much of a snow event, but more so an ice event. So that is why this is a lot more significant than the snow. But that is all the information I have for this storm Definitely going to be one that flies under the radar a little bit as the eastern half of the country is dealing with a massive winter storm. That video will be in the cards probably at the beginning of this video if you want to go check that out. But Pacific Northwest, I'm not ignoring you. And this will hamper some of your travel plans, especially going into Saturday with that ice. So make sure to stay safe uh, if you don't have to drive i wouldn't recommend it uh let the crews get out there do their thing and make it so that you could have an easier time getting around saturday and sunday when it really matters right but that is all the information that i have for today thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time